And, uh, and it says, quote, again, less than 5,000 men could have quarried and built them in 20 to 40 years. So my point is that if you go by the biblical chronology, we know that the Jews were slaves in Israel. We know they made bricks with straw and so forth till the point Pharaoh said you can't have straw anymore. And uh, we know historically that record is 300 years more recent than where they are right now in their secular thinking. Yes. Well, look how far they've come. Let's so give them a they're, hand. They're, headed they're, the right they're coming this way. So, now, now, weren't you telling me that they have seen inscriptions in the pyramids? By the way, I have climbed Cheops Pyramid. Yes. Uh, actually, this website, pbs.org, talked about what's essentially graffiti on the inside of these things. And it, there's every indication there were competing work crews. They called them uh, by a term I had not heard before, uh, files, I think, P-H-Y-L-E-S, or gang crews that were competing. So perhaps they were speeding up. They were doing it actually faster than we thought. Yes, uh, natural but human competition. All right, let's crunch the numbers. To, to address the, the primary uh, objection that I have heard is that uh, there just weren't enough people to build them. So I've said, well, with the growth rate of these various amounts for this many years, the numbers crunch out to this many people. And uh, I think 300 years easily is how long, and probably 500 years. That gives you 1.3 million people available. Yes, but even at 3%, we know that with Shem, Ham, and Japheth's families, they were growing at close to 4%. And uh, at 3% for 500 years, you'd have 26.1 million people. Mm. And, you know, the archaeologists have discovered the bakery that supplied the workers and, and all of that, and even tombs of workers that died during it. And they have a pretty good idea of how many that, it, that the workforce was. But these various scenarios could easily have supplied enough people. I think this objection has been answered. I think so. The frankly. very lowest, ridiculously low scenario is 176,000 people. Yeah. And even that would have answered it very well. Right. All right. In these final moments, I think well, you have some more information to give us. Uh, I, I thought it would be interesting to see how much space, 6.5 billion people, actually... Uh, occupy if they were standing in one giant crowd. If you yes. could mail off uh, airplane tickets and fly the world's population into one country, uh, if they would all fit in one country, how much space would it take? So I said, well, let's do the numbers. Let's crunch them. If you give all six and a half billion three square feet in which to stand, that means you'll need, uh, what, 19.5 billion square feet. Like standing in, in line uh, uh, at Walmart or a right, grocery or, store or a theater. Or at a restaurant or whatever. Right, and uh, an adjacent line. So There's giving plenty them, room to stand. Yeah, nobody touching. And uh, just in a crowd. And, of course, you wouldn't want, wouldn't want to live that way, but could we occupy, could we all fit in one country? So you just simply take 19.5 billion square feet, and if you want to put them in a circular crowd, you let it equal pi r square. That's the area of a circle. Yes. Divide by pi, you crunch the numbers. I've done it here for uh, people if the camera wants to zoom in on that. And so then you get r square, and then you uh, take the square root, and you get the distance in feet. Now, most people don't know how far that is, so let's divide by 5,280 feet mm -hmm. per mile. And we find the radius to be just under 15 miles. Therefore, the diameter is just under 30 miles. So, Dr. Ball, if you want to draw that circle, then I'll have to get out a pen and a globe and just lightly touch any country you want, any island that you want to that's big enough to appear on the globe. You could fit them there. In fact, let's do that. And in this final moment, uh, your calculations have shown if Darwin is right, then we are accidental byproducts of an evolutionary process. And your calculations have shown that's not the case. Mm -hmm. If Darwinian theory is right, we live in a world that is insignificant. We're doomed to perish. We have no divine guidance. We have no moral absolutes. We have no standard of behavior. We have no eternal destiny. We have no spirit, no soul. So we may as well be obsessed with self, with pleasure, appearance, etc. And that basically is the description of our generation. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if the Bible is right, and you've demonstrated it to be totally feasible. In fact, any other alternative would be absolutely ridiculous. Well, the burden of proof is on someone else that doesn't take the historical account. That's correct. So if the Bible is right, we're created by a loving, merciful, heavenly Father, created by a Creator who wants every hair of our head, who knows every hair of our head, wants it numbered. We're the crown of His creation. We have dignity and worth. We're surrounded by a fantastic universe that bears his signature, guided by sound and moral principles, 
comforted by his promise in his book. We have hope even in life's darkest hours. We have value that exceeds any other living creature. We have an eternal work to do. Now, which of these seems reasonable? And of course, it is obviously the biblical creation model. Let's take your pen in this closing moment and place that dot. Six and a half billion people would require not a circle this large, not a smaller circle, not even a portion of the United States. Professor, would you show how much space on a global basis six and a half billion people would require, standing shoulder to shoulder? Yes, this planet is just under 8,000 miles in diameter. So let's draw our circle in Texas, shall we? Just a dot. <laughs> just a dot. <laughs> Meaning? 30 miles in diameter. <laughs> that the numbers crunched do not give us an evolutionary scenario. And even though planet Earth is imperiled because we've lost the magnetic field to a great degree, we have free radicals saturating uh, the atmospheric context, being imbibed by living creatures. We have major problems, but it's amazingly resilient under these conditions, and the whole population could fit, if necessary, standing shoulder to shoulder in one dot, in one county, in the western state of Texas. And Genesis 9:19 says, the sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and from these the whole earth was populated, and we can verify it with numbers. Can verify it by crunching the numbers now. Every one of these 6.5 billion people is special to God. Jesus came to earth and died for you. He was buried. He rose again. Right now, he is knocking at your heart's door. Would you just open your heart to him by praying this simple prayer? Just pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I open my heart to you right now. Come in. Live within me. Cover my sins with your blood. And I will serve you with all my heart. Welcome to the family. Creation in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.